three distinguished Cherokee basket makers, all members of Koala Arts and Crafts Mutual, the nation's oldest and foremost Native American artist cooperative, shared their thoughts about the importance of their work in Cherokee cultural identity. Ramona Lossie and her sister Lucille have taught generations of basket weavers the almost lost technique of river cane double weave, including Mary Thompson and her sister Betty Maney. Thompson and Maney are both recipients of the prestigious South Arts Folk and Traditional Master Artist Fellowships for 2021. The, the history of river cane basketry is probably the oldest tradition, not just of the Cherokee, but a lot of the Southeastern tribes that are indigenous to this area. River cane was bountiful and, and so it was used for a lot of different things. The, the cane was used for wall mats and for sleeping pads and for room dividers and they used the cane for thatching on the roofs and they used, they used the cane for a lot of different things. The basketry was storage, was harvesting, was gathering, was, it, it, everything had a use and a purpose. And so many of the tribes of the Southeast wove and continue to weave. And with the Cherokee, or I guess after European contact, when the, when the indigenous tribes started getting pushed back and, and then the removal and everything, as they advanced back into the mountains, then they started using other resources available whether it was white oak or honeysuckle or some of the things that we are using now. The, the amount and, and the area of river cane now is, is being so depleted that it's down to like one or two percent of what it used to be uh, prior to European contact. And that's what is one of the things that makes it so difficult for us as basket weavers is to have that resource. We have to go and travel for a lot of distance to get and harvest cane anymore. You know, there, there are some patches on, on private property, but um, usually we're working with Forestry Service or someone, some organization that we can get authorization to go in and, and harvest. But, you know, as landowners are starting to realize that, that uh, we're looking for this, resource, they are, there are a lot of them that are willing to cooperate and willing to uh, let us harvest there. I guess basket making at this point is uh, more of a art form for me. And with any art, when you're doing that, it takes your mind away from anything else. And so it's therapy, it's, um, it's being creative and now we can afford to do basketry as the art form and not the livelihood that our parents and grandparents before us had to, had to do to survive. It is important that this art form continues for generations because it has been handed down to us for generations. It's a traditional, it's a cultural, it's a, it's a Cherokee thing. And so for it to survive today and be here today, it needs to survive tomorrow and, and our kids need to know about it. This is something that we don't read in our history books. This is something that's not taught to our kids or the general public. And it's a fact that needs to be out there. We need to know about it. And our kids need to know about it. And then maybe they'll carry on with a lot of the culture and the traditions that, uh, that we, we have. It identifies us. It tells people who we are and what we're about, what our lifestyle was like a long time ago before the European influence, you know, and how we lived and how we lived off the land. And, um, that is the most, that's a, that's a real important way of keeping our history alive, keeping it living today. And if we're willing to share our knowledge, 
with other people regardless of their age. And what I'm real honored by is that I have a lot of elder ladies that take my classes and it humbles me, you know, and I, I tell them, I said, I should be learning from you. But they said, no, that's okay. That's how we keep it alive for other generations. And when it's family working together, the children are around and what they're not realizing is that they're absorbing what they're living. That's how I learned how to make uh, white oak baskets or weave white oak baskets. Learning the whole process, just being with mom when she took us out on the hillside to chop the tree down. And we were always with her, but we knew not to bother her because she was busy. And we just played around. And um, so I absorbed all of that. So when it come time for me to uh, want to weave a basket, I already knew how because I lived it. And that's why it's important. So if we can do the same thing with other people, regardless of their family or just other people in the community or someone who wants to come and take a class from us, you know, then just hang out with me. They don't necessarily have to weave. That's how we keep it alive. Because in, in turn, that person is gonna pass it on to somebody else. Even if a student just comes and weaves one basket or, or uh, hand builds one piece of pottery and learning all the techniques and learning all the history they can about it and me sharing everything that I know with them, that might motivate them to go out and do more research. They may find out more information or more history about it than I have shared with them. And even if they never pursue it, but just make that one piece, at least they will know how. And then if someone in their family asks, you know, then they say, oh, I can tell you how to do that. You know, I can show you how to make pottery. I can, I can teach you how to build big pots with coil or the pinch method, or I can show you how to scrape the splints or work the river cane. So that's why it's important to always uh, share. I got started by my mom, just watching my mom and grandma and my uh, elder, other, other elders uh, throughout my life. Um, my grandma, Betty, Betty Lossie, worked up at the village. And I went to elementary school and used to run off from school just to go up. Then my mom, my sister, my, both my uncles worked up there, pretty much the whole family. And that's where I learned the processing of how to work down the material, the river cane, the maple, the white oak. And I, th I always thought, hey, this is what my friends don't know. What I didn't realize was my friends did know because we had a lot of basket weavers, you know. Growing up, we had a lot of basket weavers. I thought there was. And I come to realize there wasn't really that many. But um, as I got older, I realized it's hard work. And when you're a teenager, you're like, mm, you know? And my mom's like, she never pushed it. My mom and grandma, they never pushed it. They never told us we had to do this. But that was pretty much, I say it, my babysitter, was my mom didn't believe in babysitters. So when something had to be done and I had to be somewhere and she was working, I was always sitting next to her picking up the scraps, you know, and she's working her material up. That was my babysitter, was just watching her and learning, you know, from the ground up. And my best time, I thought, was when we'd go cane hunting and we'd go into the woods to get the materials and the dyes. I thought that was the best time because I got to run around. I got to run around and the little flowers, you know, with the blood root, you got a little flower that says, you know, this is, I'm blood root, you know, so you're like, oh, you know, but we were always taught half. You only get half because that is what is giving you the colors of your basket, your designs. So when we done the roots, we, or harvest anything, we only took half. These are all our elders and they speak to us. They speak to us. If you just listen, they talk. They talk every single time. You see their work. If you just look at the work long enough and just, just listen, they're gone. 
We don't live forever, but our artwork does. So if you just listen, take the time and just stop and look and listen. A lot of these weavers that you see here are related to me. A lot of them are. I've got uncles, I've got aunts who've wove these baskets, who've wove the di different designs that are here. Just, it's important to carry it on. This is who we are. If your family is a basket weaver, why not be a basket weaver yourself? Who cares if you're 50 years old and you just now started? Who cares if you're 18 and you just now started? It doesn't matter. The fact is, you started. That's the most important thing. Is your family, some families will not tell you they're proud of you, but they'll show you. And the fact that you started it and you're a basket weaver, whether it's maple, whether it's white oak, whether it's vines, whether it's river cane, whether even if it's ash, we've got ash here also. Um, you started, you're carrying on the tradition, you're carrying on what you are. This is what speaks, this is what, this is what you are. If you're a basket weaver, this is what you are. Even if you're a handle maker, this is what you are. You can be more if you are an artist that does several different things, then you're a special kind of artist. You just don't do one thing. These are my people. This is who I am. This is what I am. This is the way to present my artwork. Harvesting, teaching is great. Yeah, I love it, you know. And carrying on the, the tradition, showing them from the ground up, you know, harvesting it, to tying it, to working up, to actually making a form, a basket, even if it's just a mat, you know. This is, this is who I am. This is who my family is. This is who we always will be. I'm Cherokee. You know, I'm not tied to it. I am Cherokee. And I'm proud to be one. I really am. <laughs>